Hello again, Eternal Faith family. I'm glad that you could all be here uh, to, to join with me virtually in our continued study of theology uh, for Sunday school lessons. Um, I do look forward to continuing to study a little bit of the scriptures and uh, a little bit of a theology of them. Uh, now, as I mentioned last week, last week the primary focus of the study was on uh, our, our theological understanding of the scriptures. So, what is inspiration? What do we mean by it? What is the extent of inspiration? Uh, what are the scriptures, etc.? However, this week, uh, I would like to, to shift a little bit from a, a theological discussion about the scriptures, a little bit more to an apologetic discussion about the scriptures, and that is to answer the question, can we trust the Bible? So last week, we talked about how we believe um, that uh, scripture teaches us that scripture itself is inspired by God, that it actually is the word of God. I mean, we, we believe that, that the Bible contains um, uh, throughout itself, um, uh, it, it, it is the Word of God, that, that what you hold in your hand as the Bible is the Word of God. And we talked a little bit about why we believe that theologically, but now we must ask the question, 2,000 years removed from or so from, from the, the latest writings of Scripture, how can we be confident that what we have is the inspired text that the authors originally put down. So, sure, on one hand, we might be able to concede that, that the biblical authors, what they wrote, what they wrote was the Word of God, but how can we be confident that this, what we have with us today, maintains the, the same level uh, of integrity and, and the same level of inspiration as the Word of God? And so, uh, that's what we'll be talking about today. Can we be confident in that? Um, and we'll be talking about the, the Bible uh, a little bit more. So um, the first thing is, is a slightly a review. I mentioned both of these passages last week. Um, the first one is found in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For everything that was written in the past was written for your instruction, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. So as, as again I mentioned last week, this applies mostly to the Old Testament, um, that that scripture was, in, was, was written for your encouragement, for your instruction, and for your hope. Um, and then, uh, once again, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And so, this is what scripture says about itself. Um, but again, the difficulty now becomes, can we be confident that what we have today is inspired in the same way as what Paul wrote when he wrote these letters. So the first question I think we should answer is, what is the Bible? Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can mean, um, or a lot of different ways that you can answer this question, because there's a lot of different things that people will ask when they ask this question. Um, so, so this question can mean a lot of different things, and so the answers are going to mean uh, a number of different things. But uh, first, just some, some just facts about the Bible. So uh, to begin with, the, the Bible is a collection of documents. It is not necessarily a document itself. It's more of like an anthology, if you will. Um, the, the Bible is a collection of multiple documents. It's not um, just a single um, document, but you should think about it as a document with multiple um, parts and with, with other works inside of it. Um, in total, there are 66 documents in the Bible, and we, we would call these the, the, the books of the Bible. Um, uh, maybe it might be um, uh, more, more helpful to think about them as their, their parts. For example, you have the, the Pentateuch or the Torah at the beginning of the Bible, which is the first five books. Then you, know, you have some of the historical books. You have prophets. You have the wisdom literature. You have, um, uh, in the New Testament, you have the Gospels. You have um, the Pauline letters. You have uh, the other letters, uh, etc. And so you can think about these as different parts that these documents all fit into. And so our Bible is, is a collection of 66 total documents um, that we believe are inspired by God. Um, so how many years did it take to write the Bible? Um, there's, there's a lot of misinformation uh, about this topic. Actually, I've heard everything from um, it was all written thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, uh, all the way to I've heard Jesus wrote the Bible. Um, uh, both of those things are false. Uh, Jesus did not write a word of the Bible, actually. Um, not Jesus himself, uh, the, the, the man. Um, 
In total, it took over a thousand years from the earliest book to the latest book. Um, most people would, would, would argue that uh, the Torah, uh, Genesis through uh, Deuteronomy, was written between 1400 and 1100 BC, uh, probably about 1500 to 1100 BC. Uh, and the last books of the New Testament were probably written in the late or mid to late 90s uh, AD. So, so we're talking a minimum of, of a millennia to write the Bible. Um, how many total authors? Uh, well, there's about 40 different authors in the Bible. Um, and uh, that, is, that is just authors. That is the number of people who actually wrote things. There are even more people involved in the collection process. So for example, the book of Psalms. Um, there was a number of people that were involved in the collection of the Psalms and the organi organizing of the book of Psalms um, that were not necessarily authors. But for authors themselves, there are about 40 people who actually wrote the words in the Bible. Um, and how many languages and which languages? Well, in total, the, the Bible was written in three languages. Uh, they're Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Uh, Hebrew and, Amer and Aramaic are very similar languages. They're Semitic languages. Um, they're very similar to Arabic. Um, they're uh, obviously similar to modern Hebrew um, and, a, and a handful of other languages. Uh, and this is what the Old Testament was written in. The vast majority of the Old Testament was just written in Hebrew. Um, and then small parts of the Old Testament, uh, a handful of the prophets, Jeremiah, um, bits of Daniel, were written in Aramaic, which is a little bit different than Hebrew. Um, and then the New Testament was written in Greek. Um, it was written in Koine Greek, uh, which was the, a very, very common language at the time. Many, many people learned to, 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 to speak um, a little bit of, of it, and uh, a lot of people learned how to write it and read it. Um, and then what continents was it written on? Uh, and it was written on three different continents. It was written on Africa, Asia, and Europe. So in total, what is the Bible? The Bible is a collection of 66 documents written roughly over the period of 1,000 years, more or less. Um, it was written by 40 different authors, including many, many more uh, editors and, and, and compilers. Uh, it was written in three different languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, and it was written on three different continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Um, and so these are, this is just a little bit of biographical information about the Bible as a book. Um, but now we get into a little bit more of an interesting question, and that was, how did what they wrote down so, so long ago get into our hands today? How were the manuscripts of the Bible copied? And the answer is, by hand. Um, we are a long way from the printing press whenever the, the, the Bible was being authored. And so the only way to copy anything back then was to do it by hand. Um, and scribes were, were in charge of this. They, uh, for the most part, scribes were in charge of this. Um, and they would take, uh, oftentimes they would translate word for word or letter for letter. It was not, they read a sentence and then they try to, like, yeah, okay, I kind of get what that sentence says, and they would write it down. Uh, they would write it down verbatim. They would write down word for word. Uh, some, some scribes, uh, some scribal traditions actually mandated it that you had to, to copy letter for letter. Um, so you would, you, would, you would read the letter A, and then you would move over to your copy, and you would write the letter A. And then you would see the letter B, and you would write the letter B. And then you would go letter for letter to uh, ensure accuracy. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a Jewish, uh, Jewish sect that was so strict on their uh, copying processes of the scriptures that uh, after a person had finished copying an entire page, they would count the total number of characters on the original page, and then they would count the total number of letters or characters on their copied page, and if they didn't match, they would throw away the copy and copy it again. Um, and so it was, it was that precise and that exact of a process to copy um, the scriptures. And so um, if you see in the PowerPoint and whatnot, the, the, the uh, abbreviation MSS dot is, means manuscript. Um, that'll show up a handful of times. Um, so let me ask another question, and that is, well, what makes a manuscript or a copy of the original a good manuscript? Well, the primary way that you can do that or, or the primary way that you measure that is you know that a book has a good manuscript tradition based on the date of the earliest manuscripts 
and the amount of manuscripts. So if you have a book that's roughly a thousand years old, you're going to want manuscripts that are fairly close in date to the original writing of that book, and you're going to want more of them. So the more the better, and the earlier the better. That's, that's what you're looking for in a, in, a, in a manuscript tradition. You're looking for manuscripts that are close to the original writing in date and that are numerous so that you can kind of compare and contrast, make sure that, that these manuscripts don't heavily disagree. So what is the biblical manuscript tradition? How does that, how does that look? Well, first, um, what, what, we're going to have to take a look at how does the Bible and its manuscript tradition match up with uh, other ancient works? Because, well, the Bible is a collection of ancient works, and so we need to compare it with other ancient works. Again, we didn't have the printing press. Printing and copying was not so easy. So um, w how many manuscripts of the Bible do we have, and, and, and how early are they? Well, first, I would like to compare with other ancient works. So these are um, popular, uh, oftentimes very famous works of history um, the, the historians still study and historians still take a look at. And let's see how they compare with the Bible. So the first one is Tacitus' History of Rome. Um, in total, we have three handwritten manuscripts, manuscripts, and they're from around 800 years after the original was written. So Tacitus is, was, a, was a Roman historian. Um, he, he wrote about the history of Rome. As a matter of fact, a lot of our knowledge about the history of Rome comes directly from Tacitus. Um, and we have three manuscripts, and they come from roughly the earliest 800 years after Tacitus lived and wrote the originals. Another one, the Institutes by Gaius, another uh, historian. We have, again, three manuscripts, and the earth comes from about 300 years after the original. Uh, next, we have Thucydides, uh, who was a Greek historian. We have eight total manuscripts, and the earliest one comes from about 500 years after the originals. Uh, and then we have uh, a name that some of you might know, Josephus, uh, who was a Jewish Roman historian. Um, we have 50 manuscripts from him, uh, and the hundred years after the original. Um, and Josephus was actually a first century historian, so he lived roughly in the time uh, of Christ. Now, let's take a look at the Bible. Now, I want you to take a look at these numbers again. For Roman historians, they have about three. They range from eight to three hundred years after. Um, for this Greek historian, we have eight total manuscripts, five hundred years after. For Josephus, we have 50 manuscripts, 900 years after the originals. What about the New Testament? What about the New Testament? So in the New Testament, our Greek manuscripts, how many total do we have? I want you to take a guess. Just think, how many do we probably have of different parts of the New Testament? In, in the Greek language alone, we have, alone, we have about 5,600 Greek manuscripts for the Bible. About 5,600 just in Greek. There's about 10,000 total in Latin. Uh, most of those would have been written probably 4th, 5th century to 14th century. Um, and, and that would be, so in addition to the 5,600 Greek manuscripts, we have about 10,000 Latin manuscripts. And then there's a lot of other languages that the Bible was copied into, Syriac, Coptic, for example. Um, and so those accumulate to, depending on which ones you count and how you count them, uh, about five to 10,000 more. So for the New Testament alone, you're looking at a minimum of about 20,000 manuscripts. Now compare that, again, to our ancient historians, like three. The most on our list was was, was, was 50. So what about the Old Testament manuscripts? Uh, there are fewer Old Testament manuscripts, that is true, uh, but there are still hundreds, um, like, like hundreds of New Testament manuscripts. Um, it's not just like a half dozen, um, uh, but, but, but we do have hundreds of 
Hebrew Old Testament manuscripts, as well as thousands and thousands and thousands of New Testament manuscripts, which ironically, the, the New Testament is typically uh, more harshly contested than the Old Testament when it comes to um, uh, discussions about reliability of Scripture. Um, but that's, that's a discussion for another time. So as I mentioned earlier, there are two things that we really need to, to evaluate. Um, we need to evaluate the number of manuscripts that a book has. We need to uh, discuss the dates in which they were written. Um, now again, remember that, that for, those, um, for these works of history, these secular works, uh, you know, 800 years, 300 years, 500 years, 900 years, what are we looking at with the Bible? How long after the original copies of the Bible, how long after they were written, um, do, we, do we have manuscripts? Well, the earliest, the earliest manuscript that we have from the New Testament is called John Ryland's Papyrus, uh, P52. Um, and it is from anywhere between probably 120 and 140 uh, A.D., um, that is probably around 30 to 40, maybe 50 years after the original was written. We have a very small, very, very small papyrus. It's actually, I believe I had a picture of it earlier. It's that papyrus down at the bottom. It looks like it's in shambles. Um, it has uh, parts of a handful of verses on it. Um, and that is the earliest biblical manuscript that we have. And it is... Um, probably not more than 50 years after the original was written. Um, and for the Old Testament, they range, depending on your book, uh, I mean, for the Pentateuch, it's a little bit different than it is for the later history books, like Chronicles, for example. Um, but these range anywhere from two to 300 years, um, which is still remarkable for the standard of ancient history. In addition to that, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the Dead Sea Scrolls was a very interesting uh, discovery by biblical scholars and archaeologists um, in the 20th century. Basically what happened was, in 1946, uh, a series of caves were discovered that actually housed a lot of really, really old texts. Um, not all of these were biblical. Um, not all of the manuscripts that were in uh, the, the Dead Sea Scroll finds were uh, books in the Hebrew Bible. Um, but a lot of them were Jewish history, etc. But what the Dead Sea Scrolls were was a collection basically of the entire Old Testament. Now, I talked about earlier that there's like 20,000 New Testament um, manuscripts, um, but the Dead Sea Scrolls was one of the best for our reliability in the Old Testament as well. Um, because most of the the Dead Sea Scrolls were written between 250 and 70 B.C. So that's, that's just a few centuries before Christ. Um, and it, it contains manuscripts of almost the entire Old Testament. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, there, there are books in their entirety of the Old Testament. Um, and these were not written much longer after the... The, the originals would have been, would have been authored. Um, so prior to the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, the oldest complete Old Testament, this is crazy, but the oldest complete New Testament that we had prior to 1946 was from 1008 A.D. So the oldest Old Testament that we actually had a full copy of was over 2,000 years after the originals were written. But the Dead Sea Scrolls changed that because the Dead Sea Scrolls were from 1,300 years earlier than that, I mean, well within a few centuries of the originals being written. And so what does this mean? Well, the biblical scholars and, 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 and archaeologists compared what they found in the Dead Sea Scrolls from the 200s to 100s BC, with that 1000 AD um, work, and they discovered that they were almost identical. As a matter of fact, there was over a 99% match in every, in, in, in word for word. And so what that meant was that 
believers in the Bible could be a lot more confident in the reliability of Scripture because the copying process had, had, had lasted over a thousand years with no major changes between these Dead Sea Scrolls and this codex that we had um, in, in 1000 AD. And so what, is this, what does all of this mean for our Bibles today? Well, uh, first is that the Bible, as, a, as an ancient document, has way, way, way better numbers and, and way better dates than any other ancient work uh, of history. I mean, you go through a, a list of ancient documents and nowhere do you get tens of thousands of, uh, of manuscripts of these documents. None. Um, and much, much less do you get ancient documents with manuscripts that are so early in date. Um, and so why is this important? Well, the, the, the most important aspect of this, the most important thing to take away from this for believers, is that even though we might not have the originals, and we don't have even copies of the originals, or even copies of copies of the originals, that does not mean that we do not have what the authors wrote. Just because we don't have the page that Paul wrote on, does not mean that we do not have the words that Paul wrote. Um, this is the difference, uh, scholars will call this the difference between the original autographs uh, and the original text. So the original autograph is like the thing that Paul wrote on. Uh, the thing that Moses wrote on. That's the actual page that they wrote. But what we do have, of course none of those things exist anymore, they were written on basically dead plants that decayed after a couple hundred years for the most part, especially for Old Testament. Um, New Testament paper was a little bit better, and some of, it, some of it might have survived a little bit longer. So what does this mean? Well, it means that while we might not have the physical pages that Paul wrote, that we can be confident that what we do have is still the words that Paul wrote, the same message that he wrote. So I want you to think about these a little bit. These are very common arguments that I hear against the reliability of Scripture. Whenever I say, well, sure, I, I, you know, I believe that the, that the Bible is uh, the infallible, inerrant, uh, complete word of God. Um, these are oftentimes things that I'll hear in response. One of them is, well, we can't believe in the Bible because we don't have any of the original copies. I want you to think about that for a second. Well, how learning a little bit of what we learned about today, how might you respond to that? We can't trust the Bible. We don't have any of the original copies. Well, just because we don't have any of the original copies does not mean that we don't have what the originals had written in them. So we might not have the copy that is the original, but we definitely have the words that were in the original. And our very uh, solid manuscript history demonstrates that. We have a lot of manuscripts. We have very early manuscripts. We have very good manuscripts. What about this? The Bible wasn't written until a long time after Jesus lived, uh, and the disciples. It was all just kind of made up later. Um, I, I actually heard that most of the Bible was written two or three hundred years after. Um, uh, this is simply just not true. Um, I don't. There, there, there is literally no manuscript or or or, or um, a biblio, uh, bibliology. Uh, there, there's, there's very little. Um, history or archaeology or anything that even supports that idea. Um, uh, I think it's just a popular argument that people throw out there to, to try to stump Christians. Um, it's not true. I don't know where that idea even comes from. Um, as a matter of fact, most secular scholars will admit that nearly the entire Pauline canon was probably written before 60 AD. Um, uh, and most scholars will admit that, that the Gospels were written um, prior to uh, the end of the first century. There might be some contesting that, but uh, the vast majority, even of non-Christian scholars, will argue that the Gospels and Paul were completed before the end of the first century. And so, um, I, I don't know where this idea comes from. Um, manuscript tradition, church history, secular history, all seems to imply 
that the, bio, the, the, the New Testament was not written much after the life of Jesus. I mean, maybe uh, decades after, uh, parts of the New Testament would have been authored not much longer than a decade or two after. Um, but to say that it was written generations later is just patently false. There's no evidence to support that claim. And what about this argument? Well, people have added and changed the Bible after hundreds of years. You know, I mean, it was written so long ago that people started changing things little bit by little bit. Um, the issue with this, of course, is that the, we have so many manuscripts from so early that if people were changing things in the Scriptures, then those manuscripts would have contradicted the rest of the manuscripts, and those that had been changed would have been thrown out. Um, they, they would not have been considered uh, authentic if the rest of the manuscript tradition um, had, uh, had, had contradicted them. And so changing the manuscript tradition would be very, 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 very difficult. Um, I once uh, heard an argument that uh, in the, the uh, Council of Nicaea in 325 AD that... During that council, all of the church fathers gathered and changed all of the manuscripts. Of course, this is, I hope you understand how absurd it would be for a couple, maybe a hundred or two hundred of the church fathers to get together and collect 20,000 documents from all over the world in all sorts of different languages and then change everything you know, make sure that it doesn't look like it's been messed with for all 20,000 documents and then redistribute them and put them all back as if nothing happened. And so it seems impossible for, for, for such a feat to have occurred. And so the idea that people change the Bible hundreds of years later just doesn't seem feasible um, with the amount of early church writing about scripture um, and uh, the amount of, of um, manuscripts that we have. As a matter of fact, there was a study done not too long ago on the early church quotation of scripture. And they said that within the first 200 years of the church, they concluded that you could actually reconstruct only from quotations. This is not from copies of the Bible, but from, for example, sermons, um, letters, uh, early church councils, um, uh, etc., things that, where the early church talked about Scripture, that you could reconstruct only from those statements the entire New Testament except for seven verses. You could reconstruct the entire New Testament because the entire New Testament had been quoted within the first 200 years in writing except for seven verses. And so, I, I, I contend that based on the manuscript tradition, based on how the Bible compares to other works of history, that we can be very confident that what we have, what we, what we hold in our hands, what we have access to with the manuscripts, is the authentic an original text that was written by the biblical authors. And so um, I hope that, that this has been a little bit helpful to, to each of you today. Um, it's true, we don't have copies of the originals. We don't have copies of copies of the originals. Um, but that does not mean that we cannot be confident in what we do have. Um, and, and of course, what we do have is, is a very, very, very solid manuscript tradition uh, with very early and very numerous manuscripts in many different languages, found in many different places. Um, and, and, and it doesn't seem possible to have just gone back and changed all of them, um, especially in the ancient world. Um, and so I hope that, you're, that you are more confident in uh, our commitment to the fact that, that the Bible really is uh, the Word of God and that we do have the words that were originally written. Um, but uh, that, that concludes our study for um, uh, the Bible, our theology of the Bible. Uh, we'll be moving on to discuss some other things um, uh, uh, later. Uh, 
But again, I do ask that if anybody does have any questions or wants to talk about something, uh, wants me to talk about something, uh, please email me, email the church office, uh, call them, get some way to let me know what you would like for us to talk about, um, and, and we will answer those questions. So um, if you will please bow your head in prayer uh, as we conclude this study of Scripture. Dear Lord, I do thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to study your word, to learn about your word. God, I pray that you would um, speak to us through your word. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be confident in it, Lord. Um, that, that although um, the, the, the history of Scripture might, might be long and, and complex, Lord, that we, we can be confident in those that have come before us that have preserved um, your word, Lord, and, and we thank you for that. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey, everyone. We'd like to start by thanking you for being here with us. We're so glad you decided to join us in our worship today. For more information about us, visit our website at www.eternalfaith.org. If you have questions, please feel free to give us a call at 512-272-4043 or drop us an email at office at eternalfaith.org. Looking to make a donation? You can give to Eternal Faith in several ways. On the church website at www.eternalfaith.org and just click on Give in the menu bar at the top the Secure Give app on your phone, or you can always send it via U.S. mail to Eternal Faith Baptist Church, 12720 FM 973, Manor, Texas 78653. Please join us Sundays at 1045 in person or for a live stream. Can't make it at 1045? No problem. You can always watch online anytime. Just go to the website at www.eternalfaith.org and click on Watch Sermons in the menu bar. If you have questions, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email. Or better yet, join us in person. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can subscribe by hitting the Eternal Faith logo in the center or by hitting the subscribe button below this video.